morning everyone and uh, uh, once again a big hello to our jury members, very patient people who have been hearing this for a long time now. Uh, my fellow contestants, it's been a pleasure listening to you talk about various topics so far. And everybody else in the audience who is taking the pains to come here on a Sunday morning and listen to us talk about processes and product. My topic today for the moment is that standards are better than frameworks? I don't think so. Let me tell you why. A long time ago there was a guy called Alan Pearl and he is the inventor of Algol, the Algol. And he has a very beautiful quote. He says, Fools ignore complexity. Pragmatists endure it. Geniuses eliminate it. The whole idea of having a process system is to ensure that at the end of the day, you have a system in place which tells you to do business. My points here are going to cover the fact that why exactly standards of frameworks are not exactly what we are trying to look at. We are basically trying to prove today that frameworks are better than standards. Let's have a look at what exactly the definitions say. And this is a definition which I have sourced from my Standards. Standards are published documents that establish specification procedures. And a framework is a real or conceptual structure intended to serve as a support or a guide for building an enterprise. My basic intention here remains that as long as an organization is true to itself, to the purpose of serving its customers, standards basically come in the way and are not really conducive to the organization retaining its competitive edge as times go by. Let me give you my points again. Standards are imposed. Frameworks are adopted. Any one of us, and I, and I can state my professional integrity on this point, any one of us who has been involved in an assessment of any sort, whether it's ISO, whether it's CMMI, we always notice this last minute rush of documentation. Why does that happen? We are supposed to be living with the process. We are supposed to be breathing processes. And yet, when even a level 5 company has to go for a scan PA recertification, I observe there is a team formed that just looks at documentation. Without naming any companies, and I've been involved in multiple scan PA audits, let me tell you, every company in this country, at least in this country and USA, manages to fudge data somewhere. If standards are so integral to us, if standards are so important to us, shouldn't they be inherent to the process itself? Why do we need to create things in order for uh, any company to do business? Let me also bring to the point that why exactly standards became uh, useful for all of us. And I have a, a data point to support that also. A long time ago, when the entire IT bubble, I wouldn't call it a bubble at that point of time, it was about 10, when the entire IT industry itself came into place, standards became a way in which the IT industry, specifically the offshoring industry, started looking at positioning itself in the market, it became a differentiator for all of us. Let me give you an example about how CMMI or uh, ISO, any one of these uh, uh, standards, if I might call it, the early adopters are typically from service oriented countries. Uh, I have a, a, a document which I'll share later, it's being published by SCI, and it shows that invariably, whenever there is a new standard, whenever there is a new upgrade, and I believe Ranjan also pointed that out yesterday in his debate. The typical countries that figure in the early list of adopters include China, India, Brazil, all the countries which are service oriented. But the whole point here is that as long as that standard is there, you're only doing it for the business. My contention here is that is what the Department of Sales also does. If you are going to work based on a standard, then that standard should remain consistent irrespective of the business cycle. If a standard is something that the organization needs to adopt in order to improve its processes, then in times of crisis, that standard should really become more important. But what happens is the exact reverse. This is the data from the SCI side about scam peer results happening locally. The recession hit in 2008, and as you can observe from the graph, the number of scam peer CMI audits dropped. There is a clear correlation here. You only do standards because there is a customer need for doing that. Not a customer need, a contractual need for doing that. We do it as paperwork, we do it as bureaucracy, and we do it as checklist heroes who basically try to make sure that at the end of the day, we have these standards in place. That's all that is the relevance for standards. Now let me come to a point by which I'm basically questioning my own bread and butter. How are standards actually implemented? 
Think about any standard implementation, whether it's ISO, whether it's CMI, whether it's any other standard. How does it typically happen? The organization has a need for attaining a particular certification, particular standard. They go out into the market, perhaps float an RFP. And a consulting organization comes to them, sends a consultant to them, who basically helps them understand what they need to do in order to complete the requirement of the standard. They also submit a proposal. That proposal has a lot of things. It has a defined scope that we will choose this unit of the organization as the audited body for the standard. We will definitely use so much money and resource for implementing the standard. And the biggest thing is that by October 2012, you will be CMI level 5. Now, let's be honest with ourselves. How does that work? Really? The consultant comes to you, or you have a group of people defining the process. They define the first step of the process. Everybody is saying, okay, don't Everybody has participated in the process. Everybody is happy with it. And then finally, they start implementing it. And they realize that some of these processes don't really work so well. They need to be changed. But the process definition phase is over. What is option? One option is that we go back and rewrite the process, which nobody does. The second option is, let's live the process, let's get the audit done, and then we'll sort it out. And that is what happens. Why is it that every time you have an audit happening, there is a lot of paperwork being rehashed just to get the audit certification? The reason is precisely this, that when you have implemented a standard, it is implemented in the form of a project, which in itself is against the utility of a standard. My point here is, if you are going to target a goal, and the goal itself becomes the goal of the project, what is the point of implementing it? In most cases, we chase certifications, we chase standards, rather than utilizing the benefit of it. What is the benefit when you're just chasing a standard without even getting an iota of improvement in your process out of it? That's another point of mind you want to make. I know this point will come in and I'm going to contradict something which I said earlier, that standards are market differentiators. That's something which people always I disagree. Let me put it this way. Standards are market differentiators when there's nobody else in the market who has them. The situation today in definitely our kind of work is that, you know, I'm level 5, you are level 5, the entire country is level 5. How does it make it different? In fact, if you have a standard and you don't follow it to the truest principle, it can actually be badly backfired. Let me give you an example here. Every company I know, every company I know today, whether it's in the service sector or wherever, let me put an example. Let's take the back of India. Very proudly they put every whether I'm ISO 9 on this or Whatever. In fact, if you look at the SBI website, they have more certifications listed on it uh, than a typical IT company. So, after looking at those certifications, which in my opinion should help me get a better kind of uh, service from the counter, I go in there and see a list of, uh, see a long queue of 50 people who don't, uh, who are not being served at all. And when I get to the counter, the person shuts on the counter and says, lunchtime. The whole point of having a standard is to make sure that you are able to deliver on your promises. I don't see that happening with most companies. Another point that I would like to make here in this regard is that standards also promise something to your outside customer even in the services sector. Let me bring in more of this. I have been in situations where there has been a customer escalation in the services sector of the company and the customer eventually asks, you are a level 5 company, how did this happen? When you go out to the world and say that here I am, Conforming to a particular standard, which you do not adhere to inside your own company, it doesn't work. It is not a market differentiator. Rather, by saying that you are doing something which you are not really doing, you are actually basically maligning your own image in the market. One more point in the last slide. The efficacy of the standard. What exactly is the standard supposed to do? It is supposed to help the industry understand that we follow a certain process. We are very confident of the way we do our things. Maybe it used to work in the past. Nobody trusts standards anymore. Why is it that the market for SAS 70 or it's now SSE, I'm sure there are members of the jury who can explain this far better than I can. Why exactly are these external controls being imposed on companies? If standards were enough for a company to prove the fact that whatever they do is fine, that whatever processes they have work for themselves, what is the need for these standards, these external auditors coming into the company? And honestly, every time a customer audit happens, and it happens all the time, especially in the Indian scenario, it's very difficult to justify how these standards are being implemented. Whenever pharma clients, especially European clients, have visited India, especially Pune, 
there are most there are around four European pharma companies that are doing business with offshore development centers in India, in Pune, across different IT companies. And pretty much once a year, you see some of them coming in for an audit. The data center is in one company, the application development is in another company. They don't trust our certifications. They don't trust our standards. And when it comes to standards, as I've said earlier, even Indian companies are pretty much right there at the forefront. Every standard we name it, we have it. My point again here is that when you go for a standard, the entire expectation changes. The whole idea of having a standard is dissolved in the way it is implemented. And we are left with something which none of us are really happy with. My final point for today, and this is something which is, uh, which I think is more relevant from the business angle again. We talked about the benefits of standards which I don't think will come so much more. So let me talk about the cost of implementing standards. It's expensive. Okay, as I said, it's a bread and butter for a lot of us sitting in this room, the implementation of the standards. But the way the organization benefits from it, very few have been able to quantitatively say that okay, this standard did so many uh, million dollars savings. Sometimes, sometimes it's possible. But look at the other costs. Not only do you have to implement the standard, which involves effort in terms of definition, in terms of implementation, in terms of training, but you also have to now pay a consulting organization to come in and audit you. There has to be some kind of an auditor. And the auditors are usually pretty expensive. Not only, not only do you need to pay the auditor for the audit, while the audit is happening, the organization is going to commit itself to one activity which will not need any quantitative reserve data, which is the audit itself. None of these certification audits happen in an hour. They take ages to complete. They take, in some cases, even months to complete. And the output of that audit is a set of documents which are relevant only for that audit. They cannot be used. So that is another cost. And the third cost is the cost of renewal. I mean, the auditing body also has to make some money, right? Every time you go for a recertification effort, after three years, after five years, or after how many years, you again pay the money. So basically what? Paid obsolescence. In most standards, there is obsolescence built into it. That's again my point. It's very expensive. And whatever benefits, whatever real tangible benefits a standard can give you, can also be done using a framework. Nothing stops you from doing that. And let me bring it to a final point. And this is the point which we have seen across the board, across the globe. The biggest scams in the world, the biggest scams in the world, have always been in the company which have the maximum number of standards. You take the example of Enron. You take the example of driving a point back home. Mahindra Satya, Satya Computers are. It takes one individual to bring the company down. A company built on processes, a company built on integrity, can be brought down by one person. And a whole team of auditors, a whole suit of standards, is not able to detect it for years together. And yet, we have all these things listed out in all our websites, in all our companies that have standards. My point is the same. I don't deny the intent behind the standards. And as I say, the road to disaster is paved with good intentions. Every standard has a good intention. But the way we implement it, the way we interpret it, usually means that it won't work. I prefer to remain in the world of reality. And I know that when a company implements, implements a standard, it is possibly just trying to address a problem for which it might just be.